Hi there, welcome back to Patrick's Review. In this episode, Chrono Wing 2, Part 1. The film reviewed is Monstrosity, also known as The Atomic Brain, directed by Josephine Masili in Jeff Bloxman, year 1958, released in 63. Hi there, welcome back to Patrick's Review. You're a guide to the wild world of science fiction, action, horror cinema, and new heist, Mila Sipka. From what's going on, just look at the channel name. Now, yes, this is Chrono Wing 2. <laughs> yeah. The second Halloween we've had with the coronavirus pandemic going on. Last year was a pretty hard time for trick treaters. This year, things are a bit better. <laughs> I've always still have a fair share of problems. <laughs> and like last year, where I did four horror films, this year I've picked four other horror films, but these ones will be the scuzziest ones I could find. I mean, pretty much for a scuzzy Halloween. <laughs> so, kind of a look at really nasty sort of uh, Halloween. Anyway. So the first film we're reviewing, which is in this episode, is Monstrosity, which is a public domain staple nowadays. This actually came out in, it was made in 1958, I'll explain more about that later, but wasn't released until September of 1963 in the US. Now it was directed by Joseph V. Maselli and Jack Bloxham, written by Vi Russell, Sue Dwiggins, Stephen Dilma Jr. and Jack Bloxham. Now this is available in various public domain sources in both the theatrical prints, which are known as Monstrosity, and the television prints, which are known as the Atomic Brain. Both are pretty much equally available. My review print is a television print, and there's not really any difference between the two except for the title. Now another one of those worst movie ever made prime contenders, this 1958 production, which wasn't released until 1963 due to the production company running out of money before the film could be finished. They valiantly tried to fix the problem in the editing phase, but that didn't exactly work out too well. Monstrosity is, by most respects, an awful film. The story is extremely nasty, mean-spirited towards its cast. Only one actually survives the end of the film, and at times bordering on the type of creepiness you wouldn't allow it to be near, near children at all. The direction is flatter than a playing card, and so is the photography, which is kind of ironic since the original director, Joseph E. Masali, later went to, onto a career as a director of photography, or DP, and even wrote a book on cinematography that is to this day considered industry standard on the subject of film photography. Good to see that somebody didn't let this piece of the film ruin their live prospects. A rich but very nasty old woman who had enjoyed years of having men attracted to her purely for her wealth, probably since she is a very unpleasant person to be near despite her millions, with a personal assistant on the retainer and, uh, and a nuclear reactor in the basement that is controlled by her other retainer subject a mad scientist who is working on a process to use atomic radiation to facilitate brain transplants. So basically you transfer the brain into a new body and use atomic radiation to basically activate it. <laughs> His previous experiments have gone alright to the point of having a zombie woman walking around the house harmlessly and a male zombie that has the brain of a dog implanted into him, causing a sort of werewolf type creature that has to be kept chained up in the mansion grounds. But he has managed to get enough skill to be able to conduct experiments with a reasonable chance of success. Upon hearing the progress report and deciding the experience advanced enough in quality to work for her, the old hag hires three foreign young women from Austria, England, and Mexico to work in her house as mates until she can pick which one to become her new body. Due to mishaps, two of them pretty much get ruled out, and the last one, the Austrian, gets picked. But both the retainers figure the world isn't safe if this goes ahead, so they try to sabotage the experiment to provide, le uh, provide that woman with a safe future of a massive inheritance. Let's just say the old hag doesn't like it. Now, monstrosity is, well, the title says all. This thing is bad to the point of being unholy, but despite that, the wild nature of the story, this thing's got everything from mad scientists, which are well out of date by the time the film was made, to atomic radiation. Remember the good old days in the 1950s when people believed that nuclear medicine could literally cure every disease out there? The brain transplants, organ transplantation was a very new concept by the point of this movie's origin. To even Zombie 2 or for the female zombies completely harmless and thus pointless, before we get to see as much female nudity as the late 1950s American market will allow. Thus packing enough medic content to arouse the curiosity of the bad movie masochists out there. If it wasn't for the scene where we see a couple of brains out of their bodies, only briefly shown, I would have considered this a soul transfer film, but otherwise this is a very unplausible concept as the dog's brain wouldn't fit snugly inside a human skull without bouncing around in there like putting a ping pong ball inside a soccer ball, much less a cat's brain, and as for a human brain, for that matter, it's impossible to fit inside the cat's skull. The film's science is very, very shonky when it comes to the plausibility side of things, and the idea of having a nuclear bomb inside the house set to go off a moment's notice, 
to erase any evidence that the crime was committed inside is extremely unlikely without vaporizing the whole city, or at least the whole neighborhood. Although it could be something akin to those Davy Crockett nuclear bazookas that actually saw service to the US military in the 1950s. Back then, the US military actually had nuclear rocket launchers, and they were cutting nukes, so it had the radiation radius of about 100 meters. If you've seen Starship Troopers with those mini nukes that they use in the end, it's pretty much something like that in real life. <laughs> so mini nukes actually were real. <laughs> and of course they had a radiation radius of about 100 meters or so. So it could have been yeah, pretty effective, huh? <laughs> And the idea of an old woman leering at the naked bodies of her young kite help slash body donors while they pose for her is just plain creepy. I'm sure some of you out there could make a nasty joke out of that. I could, but I won't, given it just wouldn't feel right for me. As it stands, this is a bad movie, elevated to average status, C, 4 out of 10, due to the wildness of the story and the somewhat entertaining bad movie ride this thing sets you on writing. Otherwise, the technical level is purely a B minus, but due to the somewhat the crazy story and it just just the way it feels more like a C, average from the best. So, it's definitely a 4 out of 10. Oh, and the counterfeit British accent that Judy Bamper hopelessly tries to use is definitely the the worst British accent ever heard in the film. I thought it sounds more like a dodgy Aussie accent, you know, like some like a Southern American using a, a trying to sound like Aussie. In which case, it's a fairly bad example of imitating Australian. If you take it that way. I mean, us Aussies will find that pretty funny. But secondly, it's supposed to be a British accent, which in the case is the worst. Now for gore nudity, no gore aside from an atomically fried skeleton at the end. And the only nudity consists of the zombie woman, played by 1950s nudist Margie Fisco, completely starkers, except for metal beams covering your breasts and crotch. Even though you don't get seen all your bits, the image is still enough to get your heart pumping if you're one of those people into fantasizing about being mad scientists and experimenting in young, beautiful, naked women. Yeah, so that's it for Monstrosity, aka the Atomic Brain. Now, if you want to get that film, it is public domain, so you can find it anywhere. There are restoration prints out there, so try and go for one of those. Okay, that's it for the first episode of Corona Wing 2, Part 1. So, for Corona Wing Part 2, well, you just check the episode, just check the comment section, and you'll see what Part 2 will be. And I'll give you a clue, it's a very, very bad film. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, Bob, I'll be doing this for the next few days. I got a little surprise at the end for you. I mean, of this Corona Wing, so keep an eye out for that. I hope you guys are staying safe. By the way, I did not do a request, but if you want to have a particular film on collection, or if you just have any questions about DVDs, give me a in the comment section, I'll be happy to answer. Take it easy, guys. See you around, and that's it. See ya.